Thanks for listening to this Joy Sightings, edition number 38. Today I read three parables by Safed the Sage. Safed the Sage was William E. Barton, a congregational pastor who lived and wrote these stories about a hundred years ago. In that time, of course, people used the King James Bible, but talking like the King James had gone out of fashion. But in these parables, Safed writes in King James English with a delightful effect. The three parables I'll read today are The Collection of Geniuses, The Catalog of Flowers, and The Different Kinds of Seed. The Collection of Geniuses There came to our city a woman who called often at the house where we abide, and she counted herself a friend of Keturah. And I asked of Keturah, saying, Is this Susie person married or single? And Keturah answered, Both. And I said, It's just about what I should have expected. And Keturah said, She hath many of the marks of genius, and she knoweth many persons who are geniuses. Yea, and she hath invited us to spend an evening with her and meet a group of her friends, all of whom are geniuses in their way. So we went, I and Keturah, and we spent an evening in the apartment of Susie, and she trotted out her geniuses. And there was a poetess who wrote verse libra so wonderful that it could not be told from prose, and there was a musician who played his violin after a new theory which maintained that music should have neither melody, nor harmony, nor key, nor time, but reach the higher levels of the soul through free interpretation. And there was an author who had writ a great book, so profound that no publisher could understand it or see the need of publishing it. And there was a woman who had a new theory of thought transmission, and another who would revolutionize education by interpreting morals in terms of music and music in terms of color. And Susie introduced them to us one by one, and I and Keturah were about the only people there who were not geniuses. So they began, every man and woman of them, to tell us their theories. And when we came away, we were that weary, we walked not, but ordered a taxi. And Keturah said, It was a great social triumph for Susie. And I answered, Yes. And Keturah said, And I was bored. And I said, So was I, unless there be in the dictionary some word which meaneth the same, and then some. And I said, Keturah, thou art no genius, neither am I. But thou art mighty good and wondrous sensible, and I am a philosopher, which is, being interpreted, a man with good ordinary common sense. And Keturah said, An evening with a choice assortment of geniuses is like unto a feast in a pickle factory. And I said unto her, God hath need of mighty few geniuses, and as for a job lot like that we have just met, it is of the Lord's mercies that they are not consumed. Let us be thankful that in this world are so large a number of commonplace, sensible folk. The Catalogue of Flowers Now there came to Keturah 
a woman's magazine, and it cometh once every month. And the leaves of the magazine bear twelve manner of advertisements, one for every month. And it came to pass that while the snow was deep upon the ground, behold, she was reading advertisements of flowers and seeds, and there was one advertisement which said, Send unto us a dime, and we will send to thee six packages of seed, and a wondrous catalogue, and a book that telleth thee all about the garden. And Keturah sent the dime. And when the catalogue came, behold, it was covered on the inside and on the outside with flowers of wondrous beauty. And it told of many kinds of flowers, yea, and of vegetables that may be grown in the backyard and reduce the high cost of living. And there was a coupon that said, Buy from us the value of a dollar, and this coupon shall be, as it were, twenty-five cents of the same. And Keturah did that also. But I said, Behold, the ground is white with snow, and deeply frozen underneath it. And she said, Yea, I know that the ground is white with snow, and there is a deep frost underneath it. But the seed catalogue is a sign of spring. Yea, and spring beginneth in mine own heart when I begin to plan for the garden." And I considered the hollyhocks I had planted, and which lay deep under the snow, and I wondered how it fared with them, and whether there were any new kinds. And I said, Behold, there are many weary weeks before the spring shall come, but I will send a dollar with that of Keturah, and I will plant hollyhocks in my heart this day. So will I not wait till spring to possess mine hollyhocks, for, behold, they are mine already, those in the seed catalogue and those that be under the snow. The Different Kinds of Seed We made a garden, I and Keturah, for so have our forefathers done, even from the first of them, who was fired from his job. And we made a place for flowers and a place for vegetables, and wherever there was room, there did I plant an hollyhock. And we made a bed with straight rows across it, three hand-breaths apart, which is two parts of a cubit. And in the rows I planted seeds which I had bought from the vendor. And when the envelope wherein the seed came was empty, then did I drive a stake at the end of the row, and thereon I stuck the envelope. And Keturah asked me, saying, Canst thou not remember that there be three rows of radishes, and two of lettuce, and one of onions, and the rest? And I said, The seeds are many, and they are very small. We must not expect too much of them. How can each seed know what it is to be? But now it shall know. For if it cannot read English, then may it look on the envelope and say, Behold, I am to be like unto the picture, and my name is Turnip. And Keturah said, It is for thyself that thou dost place the envelope so, that thou mayest know the plants from the label and conceal thine own ignorance. And I said, O Keturah, what is all the wisdom in the world save this, that by some tag or label placed here and there at the end of the row, they that are wise conceal their ignorance. For that ignorance is very vast, and it shutteth down about us on every side. 
There be men who know more about seed than I do, so they can tell a radish seed from a lettuce seed before they plant it. But who of them know about the law of chances? That the seed which produced radish last year shall not of the same kind of seed produce this year pumpkin vines, each bearing in every blossom a pumpkin pie. So I entered into mine house, and I sat me down, for I was weary, and I meditated much that God needeth not the labels to remind him what each seed shall produce. And I marveled at the miracle of life, that every seed doth bring forth after its kind, so that even the grain of a mustard seed hath in it a great tree, and every package of seed doth contain the memory of God. Yea, and every tiniest seed, the veracity of God. Now this human life is an envelope containing the seed of a nature which, though it be mine own, I understand but little. And I but dimly comprehend the implications of mine own soul when it seeketh to rise a little space above the ground and put forth blossoms and fruit. But I have felt within me strong impulses which lift me upward and fashion better hopes in ways higher than mine own understanding. And it doth not now yet appear what I shall be, but some things I know.